Hi there, this is Rich Flingy for EVTV, and I'm here with my customer Wally, and we are getting ready to start on an RV build. And I just want, wanted to introduce him, talk about some of the design things that we're going to do. We're going to be featuring our 270 watt flexible solar panel with the grommet holes and the PowerSafe 15. And this is really uh, what we have in the EVTV store that fits on a lot of applications, uh, smaller RVs, yachts, uh, small vehicles. It uh, does not have the framing, has a little different uh, uh, structure to it. It goes flat on the surface versus a frame structure. And then we really got our flagship PowerSafe 15. People are loving these. We are selling them pretty regularly and they are in the store and you can get those. Anyhow, Wally, what led you to EVTV? I don't know what the very first reason I found it, but I found some of Jack's videos probably about five or six months ago. I was doing some more good investigation enough. into solar for, the, for my RV. I already have solar in my home, but uh, it's a little bit different application and the technology has advanced significantly in, in the intervening years. And I did not want to go with lead acid batteries uh, for all the weight that they come with and, and other other problems that come along with them. So I, f I found some of Jack's videos, and um, one that tr really interested me as an electrical engineer was the one where he talked about that he ran an experiment in his building with his solar panels, and he hooked up, uh, I don't remember which power safe, but he hooked it up, and he started adding the numbers up, and he clicked one of their solar what was it, Solar Edge or it's Solar similar. Edge Inverter, yeah. Solar Edge Inverter, I think they've got five of those. And uh, he turned one on and he went back and waited five minutes for it to come on and looked at the measurements and uh, then he turned another one on and he watched it. And all of a sudden, at some point, the, um, the numbers didn't add up mm -hmm. in the math. And it was like, okay, where's that current going? Why is something, why don't I smell smoke? And uh, he ba basically discovered that um, they were back charging the... Um, the inverters, and he, mm -hmm. he didn't know the exact mechanism. He thought it might be that somehow the, the uh, transistors were running in reverse, which they, I guarantee you, they will not do. And he thought that possibly he, it was acting as a rectifier, and, and in a sense, that's kind of what it is doing. Uh, but it, my first response was, as an engineer, is like, oh, no way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've never had a, had a case where I designed something, and I've designed a lot of different things for, for different military and space applications. And, never had a case where something did some uh, had a function that you hadn't designed in that worked just perfect yeah. and uh, so I, I, I kept watching a few videos off and on and then as, as then I found out you know Jack was dying I could tell from the videos that he was not well and uh, then he did pass away and I started looking into it some more and I started thinking about it some more and I, I think I did figure out the mechanism whereby this is doing the, the uh, we, we haven't actually ever had time to run the complete test to verify it, to find out why, but I think I'm pretty sure I know why and how. And so once I satisfied myself that that would work, then I said, well, I'll do some more investigation. So if, about a month ago, I came and visited Richard and talked to him and talked to Dano and mm -hmm. the rest of the team. And, and I said, okay, I'm, I'm gonna buy one of these. I'm gonna bring my RV back and do this. And uh, so uh, uh, that's what I'm, what I'm here. That's what we've done, and uh, that was actually a very uh, monumental story. Jack, uh, the people from China said it couldn't be done, and uh, he had calls from everybody, and he said, well, here it is on video, and that has started a, a, a complete name change in the inverter business, where they're now calling them inverter chargers. And, uh, but he has got... Uh, well, but actually, they, they, they've had inverter chargers okay. for years, but they, that's where they have a a separate charger built in yeah. where it switches off okay. between the one and the other will run off grid and it'll switch over. But, but this, th this, this is a, this is a, a sort of an invisible charger yeah. in there as well, depending on how they design the uh, inverter. Well, I was here filming with that and that's uh, one of the EVTV stories. Anyhow, uh, we're gonna lay out some panels. Yep. And of course, we're also gonna use a uh, Dan Foss inverter and that's gonna be part of the build as well as some combiner boxes. See what the measurements are, and we're going to give you some uh, uh, shots of that with the, uh, what's that called? The uh, drone, drone footage, and we've got a lot of cool things coming up in the show. So stay with us, and you can watch an RV build 
We do have the power safes in stock, and we now have the Sigineers uh, in stock. So uh, that's a very uh, popular inverter with all the Tesla guys that okay. using those modules. So if you need one of those, give us a call at uh, EVTV. Let's get in and start watching some of the build. Okay, so here you can see us cleaning the roof of the RV. Um, first, we washed it down with a little bit of soap and water. And once we had that somewhat clean, we applied a solution that just keeps it clean for the rest of the, its lifetime. And then also just to um, have it where it's dried up so we can work on it and mount the panels. So yeah, right now you can see it's still wet, but we let it dry in the sun for about an hour and a half. And um, then we got the panels up on the roof with our forklift and our yellow cage. And we got these amazing drone footage. And uh, you can see me on the roof and we fed the wires through an exhaust pipe. Um, that was going to one of the drain tanks at the bottom of the RV. So what we did was um, we drilled a hole on the top of that uh, drain pipe and then we drilled a similar hole on the bottom of the drain pipe which happened to be right in that crawl space and we fed um, a fish wire first and then we used um, some electric tape tied the solar wire to it and simply pulled it down through the top of the roof and um, So we have a positive that goes to the front panels and then we have a negative that goes all the way to the back panels and We just have two extra pieces that mount the first three panels to the next two panels and then we have one more piece from the second two panels to the last two panels and you can see this was the wiring laid out before we started putting connectors and mounting the panels down. And as for mounting the panels down, we used um, three inch pieces of double side tape on the four corners of the panels. And then uh, we also drilled a small hole uh, as a pilot hole. And then we put a screw with a washer that's about half inch long. Um, and we mounted the panel down to the roof with an actual screw and you can see here the hole where the wiring went in to the exhaust pipe and that way the uh, wiring doesn't um, get blown around in the wind and uh, or doesn't have to come out from the side and we put sealant around it so that way that wire doesn't uh, the hole doesn't drain water down into the pipe either and back to the panel so we screwed it down we put some sealant on top of it and that way the panels don't get blown away in the wind and it's a much stronger mount and then lastly we also use some um, eterna bond tape that we placed all around the panels and that was just extra precaution and that way the water doesn't get under the panels either so eterna bond tape screw sealant and double side tape. That is how we mounted those panels. And then next uh, we started wiring the inside of the RV um, and you can see the AC wires right now from the Danfoss going out to the panels, or the service panels and I'll let uh, Richard explain it from here. Okay we're here uh, sort of uh, midway through the solar mounting project that we've been working on on the uh, large RV build and up to this point right now uh, we have installed the uh, flexible solar panels on the roof we have brought the wires down uh, we are getting ready to and we have the power safe in so we're we're mid three quarters of the way along Danu and the other guys have put together basically a combining system with the Dan Foss inverter Danu if you would go through the different parts and explain yep. what you're doing Yes, yeah, so since it's a tight space in there, we already pre-wired a little bit of this. So we have the Danfoss solar inverter in here, and then we have the AC out of the Danfoss tying into this panel right here. And then there's a 20 amp circuit breaker for the Danfoss, and then we have a 40 amp circuit breaker over there where with a 
gland nut over there. On the other side, that's going to go into the PowerSafe six uh, PowerSafe RV. So the PowerSafe RV is going to supply the 240 volts AC, which this Dan Foss is going to synchronize to, and then we're going to supply the two DC wires coming from the roof of the RV through here into this area, and that's going to supply the DC that gets converted into 240 AC. And then up here is another 40 amp circuit breaker, and that's going to go into the loads, uh, which is the RV itself. So this is kind of a neat wiring that we came up with, and you can see this box is simply just wired to the other box to get that extra space. And this is all mounted into one board that's just going to slap and in that, there. That would be kind of an electronics sort of keepsake. A lot of times you mount on boards where you can put things inside other containers. Yep. Well, that's pretty common. Well, that looks like a very nice job, man. And we're yeah. uh, glad to get this at this point. Uh, it has been a somewhat tedious job, I would say. You are <laughs> inside or you're up on the roof. Uh, you know, always think safety and, uh, and plan out a lot of time. This was really, uh, it, even though none of the parts of the process were that complex, it just, you had a lot of ground to cover. You yes. had a lot of, a lot of, of, of footage. You had uh, ins and outs, downs, ups and downs. Yep. You get stuff, bring it back up, or to go back into this crawl space. So putting in an RV system, it's not that complex, but it is a lot of work. Yeah, you're either up on really high ground or you're in very tight spaces. Mm -hmm. So it Keep takes that in mind. Yeah, right. that's it. And on to the next. So over here, you can see the PowerSafe RV is screwed onto the side of the wall. We simply laid it on a forklift and slid it in. And Ziki here is working on a bracket that holds the whole panel with the Dan Foss and the to service panels and as you can see he is mounting it in and we have the bracket on the roof uh, of this uh, crawl space mounted with a couple screws and then we simply mount that panel with a couple screws onto that bracket and to the floor of the RV and lastly we did the wiring with the power safe off and um, and once that was done that was it well Wally I think we've got you ready to roll over here we've got the build together and uh, a few things I would go over with the audience. Uh, it was uh, somewhat time consuming. You had to get up and down a lot. We do have, you know, the forklift lift was a big deal. Uh, safety is a big deal. You know, you do have voltage coming through once those solar panels are hooked up. We well, had an ohm meter handy. Uh, and we had to lay out, draw, think, basically get prepared. So uh, it's not a afternoon John to do this, but the power safe was all assembled and wired, and that really helps, and that's sure. one of the advantages of power safes. Anything else you want to add, or? Well, you know, I've got my underneath basement space where the uh, in the RV where this most of the equipment ended up going, and um, not wanting to lose any more of that precious space for storage mm -hmm. than I absolutely had to. Uh, we did a lot of custom framing that uh, the guys assisted me with. And um, that, that made it come out really nice because it, it, we really didn't lose much. For, for the amount of uh, hardware that we added in, we've lost a minimal amount. Now, a lot of people may not want to go through all the uh, uh, gyrations to get those sort of modifications done, but it, it can be done. Uh, we didn't, uh, I, I didn't delve into plumbing modifications. That would have gained us a little <laughs> more space, but uh, that, we kind of kept that uh, to a bare minimum. So. Anyway, anyhow, thank you, Wally, no for coming in. We sure appreciate it. And keep stay tuned for more EVTV. Hello, fellow EVTV viewers. Uh, today I'm here with our battery and that's running our shop. And I wanted to give you guys an update on what we're doing. So over here we have the Model 3 full pack battery with the display for it and the 30 kilowatt inverter that's connected to this battery. And for the past... Uh, half a year I think we've been running on this battery and now you can see we have another display that's connected over here this is an EVIC display and what is happening was uh, over the past month or so as the winter came in to Cape um, it's, been, it's been getting colder and cloudier so the amount of sun has been reduced and also the amount of charging we've been doing has been reduced so what we noticed was we couldn't get through 
a couple of days of no sun with the 75 kilowatt hour pack. So we thought about how can we increase the capacity and instead of getting a new Model 3 battery, we realized we have two Model S packs, one 85 kilowatt hour and one 60 kilowatt hour. And we thought about it and we connected it together and now we have 160 in a perfect condition kilowatt hours of storage. So what we did to achieve this was the Model 3 battery was somewhat pretty low. So what we did first was we got the Model S pack turned on and we taught the Model 3 pack off first. So we had the system running with just the Model S pack and we brought the voltage down to a voltage that was closer to our Model 3 battery. Because if you have a big variation in voltage, soon as you connect these batteries together, you're gonna get high amounts of current flowing from one battery to the other just because of their low internal resistance. And when you have high amounts of current, you can damage some components, so you want to avoid that. So what we did, we brought this down to about, this was already down to about 330, 340 volts. So we brought the Model S pack down to about 330, 340 volts. And once the voltage was similar, we turned on the Model 3 pack and they just connected to each other, balanced the voltage, and we were still powering the shop with our 30 kilowatt Sandy inverter. So now what you're seeing, we are charging at four, five amps into the Model 3 pack and also charging at four amps to the Model S pack. So the current is simply splitting into the two packs and in that way they are balanced. The cells, this one is at four volts per cell and this is at 3.995. So within five millivolts variance. So this system is working perfectly. We just simply connected the batteries together as long as they were balanced and we are producing power and we are charging on solar. So I wanted to update you guys on that and you can see the Model 3 battery with the wiring going down and into the Model S pack and the Model S pack connecting to this white box that is the combiner box and from the combiner box going up and into the inverter. And so this is our system that's working right now and just wanted to update you guys on how we're going to get through this winter and come spring we can go back to one battery because we'll have plenty solar to get us through with just a 75 kilowatt hour battery pack. So recently we've been getting a lot of technical questions about our 12 volt, our two pin connectors that have the heat enable and charge enable. So we have 12 volts coming out of there that can get toggled on and off to control different uh, chargers, solar relays, or even um, heating pads. So we've had a couple questions that I had to answer over emails on what we can do with it. So in the next coming video, um, we'll, I'm going to try to explain uh, all our secret functions that our ESP32 controller can do. So in the Model 3 pack, we use our heat enable actually as a frequency shift so that we can toggle the frequency shift on the inverter to turn off the solar chargers, solar inverters, whenever our battery gets full. And, and then charge enable is still being used for a charger, so whenever the battery gets low, we can use the charge enable for turning on chargers and other components. But in this case, we only use it for a charger. So in the next video, I'm going to explain the different configurations you can use it for. So thank you for watching. This is with EVTV. Stay tuned for more.